Here we have our U24001 conductivity logger right out of stock from the factory. Comes in this box. You can see it's got the model number here, the serial number of the logger. We're going to unpack this and get it ready for our deployment. Here's the data logger. You get a copy of the user manual. Strongly suggested you, can, you familiarize yourself with this before you use the logger. The other thing that's included in here is a, a little protective cap. The cap is meant to go over the optic window. These are the, this is the optic window here where the optic LEDs are located. This is where you mate your optic base station or shuttle to the logger. Here is the, this is the conductivity sensor and there's also a little platinum RTD in there for measuring temperature. You want to make sure that when you're mounting this, you want to keep it as far away from any metal surfaces as possible. That includes any kind of cable that you might use if you're using steel cable because that will interfere with that, um, the energy that this is, is transmitting every time it takes a measurement. Here's the lanyard cap, uh, lanyard hole I should say, where we would mount it. We're going to mount this in a protective housing, so we're going to show you how we're going to mount that uh, uh, coming up shortly. Before we mount the logger in the protective housing, we want to configure it and launch it in HoboWare. We're going to launch it for a delayed start so that it will start at the same time as our dissolved oxygen logger, which is going to be 12 noon tomorrow, which is the 30th of August, 2016. So to launch it, we're going to use our optic base station again. Uh, it's connected to our USB connection on our computer. We have the blue coupler connected, which is compatible with both the U26 and the U24. There is an arrow here on the logger that we want to line up with the arrow that's on the coupler. Again, the coupler comes with the shuttle or the base station. And when we align it correctly, the coupler wakes up the logger from the little magnet that's in the coupler. It throws a switch inside and it causes the logger to wake up. And now we see our green status light, meaning we can now communicate with it. We have the logger connected to our base station. We did mention that you can use the free version of Hoboware with the base station. We are using Hoboware Pro because for water quality products like the DO logger and the U24 conductivity loggers, there is post-processing required in order to calculate salinity for the U24 or if you want to uh, apply uh, calibration to your data from a calibrated source at the beginning and ending of the calibration cycle or the deployment cycle you want to use Hoboware Pro. You need to use Hoboware Pro. So I'm going to show you that here. Uh, the interface is the same pretty much. It just Hoboware Pro supports those data assistants, the conductivity assistant, the DO assistant. It also supports use of the data, uh, the underwater shuttle or the waterproof shuttle. So let's, uh, let's launch this logger. So here's our logger. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it the Pond Conductivity. Just UND is fine. We want to, I'm going to select the low end, the full range, even though this is a freshwater deployment, and um, but I'm not exactly sure what the range of conductivity is. Because this is a short deployment, we're not really paying much of a penalty if we, if we choose both of these. Um, we know that it's going to be down in the low end of the conductivity range. It's, uh, the low range is 0 to 1,000 microsiemens per centimeter. The full range is 0 to 10,000. So I'm going to select both because it's a short deployment. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. We're going to select 15 minute logging interval, which is the same as our dissolved oxygen logger, which gives us 123 days worth of logging time until the logger fills its memory and, and it stops logging. If we only wanted to monitor the low range, that would give us 193 days before it stops logging. But because we're logging for a short period of time anyway, uh, I want 
I'm just going to enable both of them in case there's an event or something where it goes over a thousand. I doubt it. I think it's going to be more like one to two hundred, but uh, we'll we'll just turn those both on for safety. We're going to set it up to automatically start tomorrow, the 30th of August, at 12 p.m. or noontime, and that will synchronize this device. Uh, its launch time and its logging intervals with the DO logger. And that way, when we uh, we can combine those files together in Hoboware Pro using the merge feature, and then we'll be able to see both of those um, sets of uh, data uh, plotted in the same data file. So we click on Delayed Start, and the logger is now ready to be put into the protective housing, and we can deploy it. Now that we have our logger configured in Hoboware, we're going to mount it in a protective housing. This is Onset's optional water logger housing. It's, the part number is housing, the word housing dash 2x. This is the way it's shipped from the factory. And it, uh, it comes with some zip ties and the housing itself and some instructions. So we'll take a look at how this is presented here. Here is our instruction sheet. And it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple to follow. The housing is designed to be used with both the U24 logger that we're using here and also the U20 water level logger. So here is the housing itself. It's a, it's a perforated PVC pipe with a cap glued on one end that has a hole in it. There's also a, uh, this is a, a coupling that's glued on. And then there's a screw cap here for access for mounting the logger. The first step in the mounting procedure in the manual is we're going to put a zip tie through the lanyard hole in the logger here in the top. And this is going to provide a handle to allow us to remove it from the housing when we want to read out the data. You may be tempted to hang the logger or the housing by this lanyard, um, by this zip tie that's through the lanyard hole. It's not recommended with the conductivity logger and I'll tell you why. When the conductivity logger is sitting at the bottom of this housing, that, again, if you remember, this is our conductivity sensor and temperature sensor here, that lines up nicely with these access holes here that allows water to flow through the housing and thus exposing that sensor to changes in water quality. If you hang it by the zip tie, it will have a tendency, no matter how tight you, uh, you tighten your um, securing zip tie, which we're going to show you how to put in in a minute, it's going to want to eventually slide up, if it's again, if it's hanging by the logger. It's going to slide up into this part of that housing. And this part of the housing is not perforated, so what you may end up getting is you it may end up having the sensor up in this area where there's n very little water exchange and it will dampen its ability to respond to changes in water quality. The response time could be very, very long or non-existent, really. It's like a little microclimate up in here, unless your water is flowing very quickly. So important to remember when you're mounting this in here, you want to mount it so it cannot slide upwards into that housing to get your best response. So now we're going to put a, a, a securing zip tie in the housing. We're going to pass it through here like this, and then we're going to bend it so it follows the internal radius of the housing. You can see it here. That's how we're doing it like that. And if you can hold it in that position temporarily, I'm going to try to, we should be able to slide that logger right down in like so. And now we have, a tie, we have a zip tie that's around the logger through the housing 
and it will help secure it in position. Again, it won't be enough to keep it from sliding, the logger from sliding upwards if we hang it by this zip tie. So let's secure this. And one thing that you probably can't see, but this hole right here lines up nicely with that conductivity sen sensor that's in the logger. Pull that tight. We have our little Leatherman tool. We'll just trim that so it's nice and neat. And then we can put this handle through the cap, tighten that down, and we're ready to secure this to a post or some other means of support. Keep in mind that the sensor is here. If you're using a metal post, make sure the sensor is facing away from that metal post. So here, and here's the sensor over here. We want to keep that sensor as far away from any metal as possible, uh, typically uh, an inch or farther away. Okay. The other thing that people do to support this or to mount it, we've seen, is they'll take a drill and they'll drill through this cap before they put it on and they'll put something through here to support it this way. Um, so you can certainly do that, but if you, if you do try to support it with here, remember the, the logger could slide up like that and then now your sensor's up in here, which is not optimal for monitoring changes in water quality. Click next to get to the next video.